Hi, welcome back to another edition of Gem Men as we continue to read through the Bible. We are going to read kings to date and their enemies before we get into God's Word. And there's, uh, again, it's Israel versus Judah, and it's just a little timeline. Um, I can call it part two of the timeline. It's rather short. So you have Jeroboam for Israel. You have Jeroboam, 793, uh, recaptured Israel's former territories from Syria. Back in 2 Kings chapter 14, verses 16 through 29. Uh, then we have 753, Zechariah. Uh, 752, Shalom. 752, Menam, who uh, paid tribute to Pol. Uh, and then we have 742, uh, Pekahiah. And then 740, Pekah. Who suffered first consequence? Uh, f suffered first conquest by Assyria. Seven hundred thirty-two, Hosea suffered complete conquest by Shalmaneser in Syria. Assyria. Seven twenty-two, captivity, and then for Judah, we have seven ninety-six. Uh, Amaziah won battles against. Edom and Selah, defeated by Joash and Jeroboam the second um, in Israel. Uh, and then we have 792, uh, Azariah, also known as Uzziah, who conquered Goth and uh, Philistia. Uh, then we have 767, which is blank. 752, I'm sorry, 750. We have Jotham, won battles against Ammonites and Arabs, harassed by Pekah, uh, Israel, and Rezin, which is Syria. And then we have 740, nothing there really. 735, we have ah Ahaz, which uh, har harassed by Pekah, Israel, paid Assyria for protection against Rezin. Uh, Syria, also harassed by Edom and F uh, Philistia. And then there's 732, nothing written there. 715, nothing written there. And that's it for the kings to date and their enemies. Eww. All right. Well, hey, before we get into God's word, let's go ahead and jump into God's word. No, no. Before we jump into God's word, let's go to the, to the Lord in prayer. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that we can uh, come together to read your word, uh, to study our, um, to focus, not study, but to focus uh, on you, put our focus on you and to, uh, just to really do a self-evaluation in our relationship with you and um, to apply your word in our own lives, to help us to grow and help us to understand your word and help us to apply your word. We thank you and praise you. And as always, Lord God, I thank you for my viewers. Pray that you would uh, bless them and their families. And uh, God, we just want to lift this time up to you. I pray that you would just be that you would just take all the glory. And uh, anything, Lord God, that may be hindering us from reading a word, I uh, pray that we would just lay them down at your feet. Whatever it is we're going through, Lord God, I pray that we would lay them down at your feet. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks and praise, and pray. And all God's people said, A. Men, well, hey, you know, a great way to get to know um, God is through God's word, and a great way to l cry out to God is through prayer. You know, yeah, go to God, cry out to Him, call out to Him, rejoice, give thanks always. And the Bible says to give thanks in all things, and even in our trials and tribulations in our own lives. Uh, remember, God never promised it would be easy. Once we accept Jesus Christ in our lives, it would never be easy. It's going to be just the opposite, really. It's going to be difficult. Uh, why? Because, you know, we're going to be going against Satan, bottom line. And Satan's about tearing families apart. Satan's all about uh, tearing you ultimately away from God. And that's what Satan wants. And, uh, and God's there with his arms wide open, ready to embrace you. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you've done in your life, um, again, just 
inquire of the Lord. Even when David, King David, remember, I always use King David as an example because, I mean, God called King David a man after his own heart. So let us focus on how King David always inquired of the Lord. Uh, and in all that he did, even when he sinned, he inquired of the Lord and he asked for forgiveness. That doesn't mean that God's going to discipline his children because he will. Uh, we will face the consequences of our, our actions. But uh, to seek God out and inquire of the Lord, asking for forgiveness in all things and, and thank well thanking God in all things, but also asking for forgiveness, I think is essential. Yeah, we do, I, I think we need to do it on a daily basis. That's just me. You know, some people I've heard say, you don't need to uh, um, ask God for forgiveness every time you sin. You know, Jesus died once on the cross for all sins, right? Yes, he did. But at the same time, uh, there is this um, feeling of guilt when you do sin. And you know what? I think it's important. Even the Bible says we need to ask for forgiveness. So when you when you sin against a brother or sister in Christ, we need to ask for forgiveness. And... Um, and the same is true in our own personal walk with Christ. We need to ask for forgiveness when we've sinned against Him. So let us not forget that you know God is always there and His love endures forever in all things. Uh, and then God never will never leave us nor forsake us. He's there. And all we have to do is turn to Him. All we have to do is inquire. And so let us not forget um, that we have... Um, a wonderful, loving, living God who is ready to embrace us, who is ready to um, meet us where we're at in our lives. So let us not forget God. As the people, as, as we're reading God's word in the Old Testament, the people, God's people forgot God. We need to not forget God. We have God's word in our hands. You know, you know. again, I, he, People use build these the, the, the golden calves, you know, and, and the, these statues and, the, and all these different idols, and they bow down to them and they worship them. Let us bow down to God, the one and only God who reigns forever, right? Living, and He's a living God. So let us not forget Him. Let us not turn our backs on Him. He is always there. He's always present. He's always up, um, 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 I can't pronounce it. Um, 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 ten, um. Shoot, I forgot how you say it. I'm in it. I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what I mean. I can't say it for some reason. Okay. Yeah. That's how I. That's how I feel right now. I can't say it. But you know what I'm saying, right? I hope. And if not, leave a comment. And how you spell it out and how you say it, how you pronounce it out. So, say. No, oh, damn it. This is how you're supposed to say it. This is how it sounds and this is how it's spelled out. I'm in it. Ompetent. Ompetent. I think that's closer. Okay, that's the closest I can get. Okay, enough. All right, let's get into God's Word. We are in 2 Kings chapter 16, so let's get right into it. Uh, starting with verse 1, this is where Ahaz reigns in Judah, which says, starting with verse 1, In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, uh, Ahaz, the son of Joam, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz, Ahaz, uh, was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, uh, his God, as his father David had done. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the nations, whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt and burned incense on the high places, uh, on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Risen, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to make war, and they besieged Ahaz, uh, but could not overcome him. And at that time, Risen, king of Syria, captured Elath, or Elath, for Syria. And drove the men of Judah from Eloth. Then the Edomites went to Eloth and dwell, and dwell there to this day. Uh, so Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath, Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, "I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the of the king of Syria, and from the hand of the king of Israel, who raised." 
who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold uh, that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. Uh, so the king of Assyria hated him for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus uh, and took and took it and carried its people captive to Kerr and killed Rezin. Now in verse 10, King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to uh, Urijah, the priest, the uh, the priest, the to Uri. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and King ah Ahaz sent to Urijah, the priest the design of the altar and its pattern according to all its workmanship. Then in verse 11, Urijah, the priest built an altar according to all that, that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah, the priest made it before King Ahaz came back from Damascus. I hope that made sense to you because it didn't make any sense to me how I was reading it. Verse 12, And when the king came back from Damascus the king saw the altar uh, and the king approached the altar and made offerings on it so he burned it burned his offer burnt offerings and his grain offering uh, and he poured his drink according uh, drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his <laughs> beep to the page peace offerings on the altar he also brought the bronze altar, which was before the Lord, uh, from the front of the temple, uh, from between the new altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the new altar. Then King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, saying, On the great new altar burn the morning burnt offering, the evening grain offering, uh, the king's burnt off, uh, sacrifice, and his grain offering with the burnt offering, of all the people of the land, their grain offering, and their drink offerings, and sprinkle it, and sprinkle on it, all the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the sacrifice, and the bronze altar shall be for me to inquire by. Oh, to inquire by. Thus, verse sixteen, did Urijah the priest according according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the panels of the carts and removed the levers from them, and he took down the sea from the bronze oxen that were under it, and put uh, it on a pavement of stones. Also he removed the Sabbath pavilion which they had built in the temple. And he removed the king's outer entrance from the house of the Lord uh, on account of the king of, of the king of Syria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Ahaz rest, uh, rested with his fathers and was buried uh, with his fathers in the city of David. Then Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his place. We see a consistent pattern here, don't we, with with the king? Um, you have an occasional good king, and then you have, um, and even those good kings, you know, became evil in God's eyes. But a lot of the kings, they just did evil in, in God's eyes. That's just a consistent pattern I see here. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the study notes. Uh, verse 3, again to reread, it says, But he walked... In the way of the kings of Israel, indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. And that's what it says in the study notes. It says, Made his son pass through the fire is a reference to human sacrifice. Ahaz was so depraved uh, that he sacrificed his own son to the heathen gods. This was a practice of the Canaanites whom the Israelites were supposed to drive out of the land. 
verse 5. Again, to reread, it says, Then risen king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to make war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. Why could they not overcome him? Come on, help me out, guys. How did? Why could they not overcome Ahaz? It says in the, in the study notes here, it says, Israel and Syria were both under Assyria's control. They joined forces against Judah, hoping the force... Uh, hoping to force the southern kingdom to join their revolt against Assyria uh, and strengthen their western alliances. Uh, but the plan backfired when King Ahaz of Judah unexpectedly asked Assyria to come to his aid. Uh, verse 10, again to recap, it says, Now King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw that an altar and saw an altar that was at Damascus and King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest the, the design of the altar and its pattern according to all its workmanship that's what it says Ahaz went to Damascus to express gratitude and loyalty to Tiglath Pileser uh, because the Assyrians had captured Damascus the capital of Syria which was 730, 732 BC. Ahaz was afraid of a southern sweep, but he was relying more on money than on God to keep the powerful king out of his hand, land. Uh, and his plan failed through Tiglath Pileser. Didn't although, <laughs> although here we go, although Tiglath Pileser did not conquer Judah, he caused much trouble. And Ahaz regretted asking for his help. Of course, we'll be reading more about that in Second Chronicles, uh, chapter twenty-eight, verse twenty and twenty-one. Uh, verses ten through sixteen. I'm going to let you read that on your own if you wish to. But I'm going to go straight to the study notes, and it says this: Evil King Ahaz copied heathen religious customs, changed the temple services, and used the temple altar for his personal benefit. In so doing, he demonstrated a callous disregard for God's commands. We condemn Ahaz for his action, but we act the same way if we try to mold God's message to fit our personal preferences. It says we must worship God for who he is, not what we would selfishly like him to be. And ain't that the truth? We try to fit got in our own box right in our own little personal world um, of make-believe you know but God is God and God is who he is and and um, God's gonna do the things that he does how he sees fit for his glory and not for our glory so let us not be conceited let us not be selfish but rather let us um, follow in the ways of God um, Okay, moving on. Verses 14 through 18. Uh, again, I'm going to let you re read those verses on your own if you like. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into the study notes. This is what it says. Ahaz replaced the altar of burnt offering with a replica of the heathen altar he had seen in Damascus. The original bronze altar was not thrown out, but was kept for use in div divination. But in divination. Okay, there we go. The lavers were where the sacrifices were washed. Uh, the sea was a huge reservoir of water for temple use. This was extremely serious uh, because God had given specific directions on how the altar should look and be used. Back in Exodus chapter 27 verses 1 through 8 if you want to go back and reread that. Um, it says building this new altar was like installing an idol. But because Judah <coughs> was a serious vessel, <coughs> excuse me, v v vassal, vessel, my goodness, <coughs> um, Ahaz was eager to please the Assyrian king. Sadly, Ahaz allowed the king of Assyria to replace God as Judah's leader. No one, no one, no matter how attractive or powerful, should replace God's leadership in our lives. And then it goes on to say for verse 18, 
um, Ahaz had become a weak king with a weak and comprising high priest. Judah's religious system was in shambles. It was now built on heathen customs and its chief aim was only to please those in power. If we are quick to copy others in order to please them, uh, we risk making them more important than God in our lives. Fair enough. That concludes chapter 16. Hope you enjoyed today's reading. The next reading, uh, next chapter, chapter 17, this is where we'll soon see Israel is exiled to Assyria, where and also Hosea reigns in Israel. There's just a lot of turnovers as far as kings, uh, and I don't know if you're catching on to that, and a lot of um, um, mistakes that they're, they're all making, the same mistakes, actually. So... Oh, wow. Looks like chapter 17 is going to be a two-parter. We're going to be talking about the uh, prophets. We're going to be talking about the prophets, and then we're going to read chapter 17. I'm just going to kind of check to see if there's more. Oh, that's it. Okay. Chapter 17 is a little bit longer. That's okay. I'm, I'm really excited about reading about the chapters about, or the the information on the prophets though um, well, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's reading as always um, um, remember to inquire of the Lord on a daily basis do a daily evaluation I think it's very important especially in today's world uh, why is that because we are surrounded by sin and um, I felt like I'm like low right or there, I'm a little taller. Um, we're just surrounded by sin people and we need to really be on top of our game, uh, especially in today's world. And um, just being alert, being ready. Uh, we never know. Uh, you don't want to be swayed by the way of this world. You want to be swayed by the way of God's word and who God is and who we are as God's people. We need to be focused ready. We need to be action ready, ready to take action. And I don't mean, you know, let's go fight. I'm not talking about that. God might call us to war. Who knows? But you know what? Glory be to God, whatever God calls us to do. And we need to do it faithfully, placing our faith and trust in him. Remaining obedient, unlike the Israelites who have been falling away from God. I feel like today, that is so very true today. You know, people accept Christ and then they walk away from Christ. And they turn their backs on him, and then they this, they figure, well, I, I'm I'm saved now, so I can go and live my life the way I want to. No, you can't. Um, you could. I mean, it's a choice. God gives gives us free will, right? So, but at the same time, we need to um, be obedient. We need to um, be about doing the will of God in our lives. And uh, the only way we're going to be able to do that is if, again, if we're staying connected with God through His Word, and we're crying out to God, we're praying to God uh, through prayer. Uh, staying connected with God through prayer. So uh, be encouraged. Don't be dis discouraged. Even though um, man is <laughs> has become ugly in today's world, we need to uh, remember that we have a mighty God that we serve. And uh, you are an overcomer. I am an overcomer. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So keep that in mind as we go through each day on a daily basis. Because uh, God, again, is on our side, and, and He is there for us. He's not against us. So we need to rely on Him and uh, not our, on our own understanding. So uh, remember to inquire of the Lord on a daily basis, whatever your circumstances may be. Uh, and do not be afraid to cry out if you need to cry out. Don't be afraid to go to Him uh, any time of the day. Uh, so just build your strengthen your own personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ through reading his word and, and praying and going to him well hey this is Jam Man I'll see you again in the next video remember God loves you Jesus loves you the Holy Spirit loves you I love you and I will see you again in the next video until then this is Jam Man signing off for now until then peace